So section 3.4 is about the chain rule and I was looking at the homework and they ask you to do it in a slightly different way than I do. So first let me show you the way that I do it. Suppose you have the function tangent cubed. Another way to write that is tangent of x is being cubed. You don't really have to write it this way, but it just emphasizes that this is two functions. One is the cube function, one is the tangent function. In general, you cannot take two derivatives at the same time. So I take the derivative of the outside function, which means I take the three, bring it down and multiply, and then subtract one from the exponent. So the derivative, which you could write dy dx, or you could write it as y prime, is going to be 3, and then tangent of x is squared. Now the chain rule says you also need to take the derivative of this inside function and then multiply by that. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. All right, I'm done. That's the derivative. Although I would prefer to write it without the parentheses and just go 3 tangent squared times secant squared. But the way that they're asking you to do it is slightly different. So we've got the function, the original function is tangent cubed. And then they're saying write y equal to a function of u also write u as a function of x. So this inside part, so basically they're getting you to do u substitution or break this into parts. So the u is going to be the inside part. So u is equal to tangent of x. That's it, just tangent of x. And the y function well, if you substitute u in here, then y is going to equal u cubed. All right, now take the derivative of this one. So the derivative of u with respect to x, the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. And the derivative with respect to oops, u over here is going to be 3 u squared. So now I'll put those pieces together. So dy dx is equal to take the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So in this step right here, it's basically saying that this du and this du are going to cancel, and that's how it's equal to dy dx. But like I said, they're asking you to do it in parts. So the parts would go dy du, that's 3u squared. And then du dx, that's the secant squared. And then don't leave u in your answer. So replace the u with what it's equal, which is tangent of x. So that means it's going to be squared, so it's going to be tangent squared times secant squared. And then you'll see that answer is the same as I got the first time, but in the homework they're asking you to do it this way. Let's just quick look at another example from the homework. So this is section 3.4, the chain rule, and I already did a trig one, so how about if I do this one, number three. So the u would be the inside part. So that would be eight minus three x over eight. They said it should be a function of x. Okay, it's a function of x. And then y, if I am replacing all of this part right here with the letter u, then it's just gonna be u raised to a negative eight. Now I need to take the derivative of each one. So the derivative of u with respect to x equals 
The derivative of this would be 0. The derivative of x would be 1, so it's going to leave negative 3 eighths. And then take the derivative of this one. So the derivative of y with respect to u is going to be negative 8. So take the exponent, bring it down, do the power rule. And then it's going to be, let's see, subtract 1 from this exponent. So now it's u to the negative 9. And then you put the pieces together. So dy dx will equal dy du first of all, and then times the du dx. And then I should simplify that answer. So dy dx is, so the eights will cancel, the negatives will cancel, and then I don't want a negative exponent in my answer, so I'm going to rewrite it as 3 over u to the 9. So in here, they're expecting me to do all of this work on the side, and then finally your answer should have x as the variable. So finally, my answer is 3 over u to the 9, but u is equal to this. And so just replace the u, and then it's still to the ninth power. And there we go. Now when we look over here later on, like after number 5, they just, let's see, um, you know, I'll go for number 9. So after number 5, they just say, go ahead and find the derivative. If you like the method using the u substitution, you could use it. Otherwise, you could just go ahead and start taking the derivative. So for this one, this is a product. So this is the product of a 2x and then the e to the negative 3x function. And then this one is separate because it's separated by the subtraction. So right here, I need to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first one, the derivative of 2x is 2. And then leave the e to the negative 3x alone. The product rule goes plus. Now leave the 2x alone. Next, take the derivative of this e function. Well, the derivative of the e function is itself. And then the chain rule would say, now you need to take the derivative of this negative 3x and multiply. So multiply by a negative 3. And then finally, we're ready to move on to this one. So it's going to be minus, and the derivative of the e function is the e function. And then the chain rule says, now it's this one's turn. What's the derivative of x to the 5? So that would be 5x to the 4. And then I should just clean it up a little bit. So the first one. So as far as factoring stuff out, there's nothing you could factor out of all three terms. If there was something I could factor out of all three terms, I think I would. But because I can't factor anything out of all three, I'll just leave it as three separate terms. 2 times e to the negative 3x. And then negative 3 times this means it's going to be negative 6x e to the negative 3x. And then I would just move this to the front. So it says 5x to the 4 e x to the 5. Now this one would actually be correct if you still wrote it this way. It's just tradition to write it this way. Part of the reason is if you have something like y equals the square root of x plus 4 times 2, and some people have sloppy handwriting. So that 2 right there, is it inside the radical or not? Well, to make sure people understand this 2 is not inside the radical, then you could put it in front like this. So it's tradition to put this number in front, sort of because some people have sloppy handwriting. The same thing could happen with this. My handwriting is so neat, you can tell that this it has nothing to do with this x to the fifth. I can't combine these because this one is down here, that one's up there. But some people have sloppy handwriting and they, they will then, because of their sloppy handwriting, they'll have this times that, which are not supposed to be combined. So then 
it's written like that.